Hello there. Whoa, that was so smooth. You wanna know a fun fact? Um, in high school, in my theater department, I was known for being a good faller. You wanna, you wanna see? Yep, that's me. Hello, beautiful bookish people. My name is Hannah, and today we're making gnocchi, and I promise it's for a good reason, though. You shouldn't have to have a good reason to make gnocchi. It's because I read this book, Garlic and Sapphires, which talks about a food critic. All the highs and lows of being a New York food critic in the early 90s. And it's really interesting, but it's filled with a ton of recipes, and I learned a new word from it, which was umami. Now, what is umami, you might ask? And I'm glad you asked, because I have a definition for you. So, as we know, for a middle school, there are five flavor palettes, meaning sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami, which didn't come about until, I want to say the 80s. And it's most usually described as a savory, a savory dish. It increases palatability and salvation without adding any salt. Oh, hello. It's me. Oh, which is cool because I was like, well, what are the umami moments in books? So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making gnocchi and talking about my favorite savory moments in books that are indescribable and add that just little layer of extra dimension to a book. Thank you. That was a long intro, but I'm done. All right, so let's get a cooking. This should be a boiling. So, but it usually takes me a long time to open jars. Yes, we are using pasta sauce from the can, and I'm sorry, but making pasta sauce from scratch takes a long time. I don't have four hours today, but um, let me explain real quick what gnocchi is. It's kind of just a potato-based Pasta. It's because it's one of my favorites. Well, if you want to get technical, it's mezzaluna. But I tell people it's spaghetti to not sound pretentious. <coughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> so one of the first Unami moments I want to talk to you about comes from City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. I love peas. I believe that peas belong in pasta. Do not question me because as I have stated before, I am Italian. <laughs> So, City of Girls follows this one girl named Vivian as she's just kind of roaming through the streets of New York in a theater company with her aunt. Um, and you know, she's a 20-something, so she's out partying, she's out living her life, until one day her aunt kind of approaches her, she's like, hey, I want to put on a show for the neighborhood because it's kind of like sad times. They're getting like quality actors, quality set design. It's trying to like step up the production of the theater come. And Vivian kind of gets herself in a little bit of trouble because she gets photographed kissing um, a married man. I know, it, it's quite shocking for the times. And the umami moment for City of Girls is when the wife comes up to Vivian and says like, Vivian, you are not an interesting person. You are a type of person. You will never be interesting. You will always be striving to be somebody's type. And I was like, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. And let me tell you why that's umami is because it propels the character to become something more. It's kind of always lingering in the back of her mind. After that moment, she strives to kind of become a better person in general and that moment was umami because it's savory it's salt without actually adding sea salt to injury <laughs> so the next moment i want to talk about comes from the lightning thief series i just really quickly want to talk about my favorite persebeth moment now it comes from the, the titan's curse i don't know about you but i'm feeling 22 and when i started shipping persebeth was the end of the Titan's curse with the dance scene. So I think you can kind of begin to see the romance blooming in Titan's curse. Hear me out, because Percy kind of just goes on this mission and quest to save Annabeth, and at the end, he's kind of Percy wee brain. And it's just a really wholesome moment between these two characters. You're kind of beginning to see the start 
of a romance and i don't know but that's when i started shipping it was at the end of titan's curse i don't maybe i was a little late sure but that's my favorite moment okay let's talk about gathering the shadows which is probably my least favorite book in the trilogy but it has my favorite moment between two magical bonded brothers that is a great trope and i think we need to see more of that and i want to explain a little more victoria schwal thank you so much so in gathering of shadows rye is connected to kel these two brothers are connected magically which means the other's life is tied to the other there's a moment at the very beginning of gathering of shadows where this is kind of explored is where kel is getting beaten up and kel can feel it in his bones because he's feeling pain and comes to rescue Rye. And then from that moment, the magical bond just continues to grow. And you see these characters at their most vulnerable moment, but it's having to be shared with their brother. And I love emotional vulnerability. I think I need to marry a Cancer or an Aquarius. I think I need to marry a water sign because I love emotional development. <laughs> Another umami moment is another elizabeth gilbert book this is a uh, eat pray love and i just read this book because i think i'm becoming an elizabeth gilbert stan it's fine we don't have to talk about it so eat pray love is about a woman's journey through her divorce as she kind of travels through italy india what is the last one i cannot remember the last one and i am a sucker for when authors introduce a kind of tenant or theme. Oh my gosh, you can totally see the steam. Wow. This is how I keep myself young. Now, it's really easy to tell when Yoki is done because the little potatoes will kind of float to the top. It's also dangerous. I'm sure there was a more professional way to do that, but I couldn't tell you what it was. As I was saying, I'm a sucker for when authors introduce a tenant and then reintroduce it as the character or the, I guess the writer, because this is a memoir, grows and like new meanings for the words develop through the novel. And Eat, Pray, Love does this beautifully with Attraversa la strada. Attraversa la strada. Attraversa la strada. And you call yourself Italian? The shame, the shame. That means cross the street. And it has a tenant of uh, being with a friend. I swear I'm Italian. Actually, give me one second. Oh, what's this? The Italian flag? Didn't even notice. <laughs> I think the gnocchi is done. Let's try one, shall we? That's pretty good. Now we're going to take the pan and we're going to drain it. This is what it's like being Italian in the kitchen who wears glasses. You get fogged up. So in E Pray Love, as I was saying, Atrovenziano um, means cross the street with a friend. Um, and through the novel, it gets developed through uh, friendships, through tonic friendships, and eventually kind of romantic relationships. And it gets turned to like cross the street with me, your friend, your, I hate this word, but lover. And it's just a really beautiful moment that happens at the end of the novel. And it's kind of revisited this, this Atroviziano. And I'm just a sucker for that. So that's Umami. That's the savory moment. I have a newfound respect for people who do cooking shows because it's hard to multitask. Mm. I love the sizzle. I love the sauce. And you mix it all together. <laughs> Hopefully some of y'all didn't know what gnocchi was and I just introduced you to the best thing in your life. I love how the Italian accent is slowly getting thicker. Oh my gosh. Look at that beauty. Okay, we're gonna do a close up. Are you ready? book I want to talk about is Hamlet. Yeah, I know. Crazy. I don't talk about Shakespeare enough, even though I love him. I think the umami moment in Hamlet, I'm gonna give a spoiler, but I'm sorry, it is 400 years old. I think it's when Hamlet kills Polonius. So there's a lot of literary debate in Hamlet that if 
Hamlet is crazy or is there an actual ghost that is telling him to kill people? And so what killing Polonius signifies is that he is going through with the act. Yes, he meant to kill his stepfather slash uncle, but that is when this play starts to get crazy. It's always in the third act, guys. That is a decision that Hamlet makes that is crucial to his character, that he is deciding to honor his father. And it is up to your interpretation to think, is he crazy or is there actually a ghost that is telling him to do these things? I love Hamlet. Wow, I sound like an English major. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say on the Unami moments in books. Let me know down in the comments your favorite book series and the, the savory umami moment that you think adds just another complex layer of flavor to your favorite book. Anywho, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Keep reading and all that jazz. Potato, I'm in love. I'm in love! I'm a wandering of the road to stop. No. And that moment was Unami. Umami. Why can't I say this word? ASMR. I forgot to open my soda. Take it easy. No, I'm Radio Rebel. Oh, it's Naoki. I love Naoki so much. Because then you can tell your mom, I actually did have some grease today. It was in my gnocchi, my potato pasta.